serious. Life is serious. The future is serious. It's serious whether you win or lose. It's serious whether you succeed or fail. It's serious whether you've got a good future carved out for yourself or you do not have. These are serious matters. Matters of the heart are serious. Matters of income are serious. Matters of supporting your family, serious. And I'm asking you to take it serious. Take your own future serious. What you can do for your family, take it serious. This is serious business. Number one was get serious. Here's number two, get smart. See if you can't increase your ability to comprehend ideas, information that can be life transforming. Don't miss the opportunity to learn. Take a good key phrase home, use it in your training. Don't be lazy in learning. Don't be casual in learning. Get smart. Here's a couple of parts to it. Number one, your own personal experience, right? If you've had a bad week, just sit down and ponder that for a while. Study it. See if you can't pick up some ideas from a poor week and then make a better week. Learn from your own experiences. One way to learn to do it right is do it wrong. I mean, you know, that's one way to learn to do it right. Do it wrong. Now, the key is don't let it take too long. If you've done it wrong for a year, we suggest that's long enough. You don't need another year just to prove a point. No, one year is enough. Learn from your own experience. This is called the possibility for life change starts with education. Don't be lazy in learning. Don't be lazy in picking up the ideas. Don't be lazy in learning from your own experience. Learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the beginning of life change. Some people want to start with motivation, but you don't start with motivation. Somebody says, just motivate this guy, he'll be all right. And the answer is no, probably not. If a guy's an idiot, you motivate him, now you've got a motivated idiot. You know, study, learn, grow, change, develop, right? If you want to solve your problems, you've got to learn. If you want to take advantage of an opportunity, you've got to learn. Develop your own personal philosophy here. Philosophy, major determining factor in how your life works out. So don't ask for a more favorable wind. That's like wishing something that's not going to occur. Don't ask for better seed and soil. All you got's what's available. Don't curse what you got. On this planet, all we got's the seed that's here, the soil that's here, the miracle of life that's here, the opportunity that's here, the seasons that are here. That's all we got. Whatever you do, don't criticize all you got. The key is to set a better sail and turn what you've got into the miracle of your, of your future. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Here's number three. Get going. You gotta get going. You gotta take action. The disciplines is the miracle process. And here's how to get the miracle of your future going as far as disciplines are concerned. Number one, do what you can. You might go home and set a whole new pace for yourself and we call it cleaning up neglect. Should walk around the block, could walk around the block for your good health, don't walk around the block. See, you're on the wrong track. Should read, could read, don't read on the wrong track. Could change, should change, don't change. You're on the wrong track. Letters you haven't written, conversations you haven't had with your family, don't let neglect destroy your days, destroy your life, and destroy your future. Go back and do what you can. And if you'll do what you can, then life will give you some extraordinary things to do. You've got to take care of the small disciplines before life will give you a chance to handle the more complicated disciplines. You start first with the smallest of disciplines and do not neglect them and do not disregard them as being trifling. Everything matters. Everything's important. Good phrase to take home. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. If you hadn't thought of it before, here it is. Everything affects everything else. It's so easy to be casual and say, well, this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. I'm telling you, everything matters. Of course, some things matter more than others, but there isn't anything that doesn't matter. Then here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects all your other disciplines. If you'll get some new things going, make some calls you've never made before. Step up your activity level. Step up your labor level. Go for the disciplines, the smallest of disciplines, the least of disciplines. But here's the key. One of the greatest extraordinary phrases that's ever been written from antiquity says, if you'll be faithful, if you'll be disciplined when the amounts are small, we'll make you a ruler, give you a position of authority when the amounts are many. Take care of your disciplines when the amounts are small. Do not disregard the smallest of disciplines. Let us not neglect. Do not neglect the smallest of disciplines and build on that foundation and you can have everything you could possibly want. Here's number four. 
get better. There isn't any of us that can't get better. So turn on this whole idea of personal development and personal growth. That was what my teacher shared with me that changed my life. I'm telling you, for things to get better, you got to get better. Don't ask for it to change out there. Ask for you to change here. Don't ask for a more favorable wind. We call that naive. Don't ask for better seed, better soil. This is the only planet you got. Just ask that you can get wiser and stronger and better. Be able to take care of your own responsibilities. Get better. Learn how to handle the seasons better. Let's go through them. Learn how to handle the seasons of life. Number one, learn how to handle the winters. It's not just the winters of the seasons. There's all kinds of winters. The winter when you can't figure it out, the winter when it all goes wrong. Social winters, okay? economic winters that a lot of people are experiencing these days. Personal winters when your heart is smashed in a thousand pieces and the nights are unusually long. It is simply called winter time. But here's what you've got to do in your own personal development, your own personal growth, and that is just get better at handling the winters. You can't change the winter, you can't change the seasons, but you can change yourself. You say, well, what can I do about the upcoming winters of my life, the challenges that I know I'm going to face? Here's what you can do. You can get wiser and stronger and better. Just make a list of that trio of words. Wiser, stronger, and better. Next, get stronger. You can develop the muscle. You can develop the courage muscle. You can develop the inspiration muscle. You can develop the dedication muscle. You can get stronger. There isn't anybody here that can't get stronger. Next time we see you, may not even recognize you, how strong you're going to be able to become in language, in style, in personality, the ability to cope, the ability to handle with anything that happens, no matter what happens. And the third one is get better. We can all get better. I've gotten better. I'm asking all of you to get better in spite of the winters, in spite of the downturn, the money downturn, the social downturn, the personal downturn, whatever it is. Just get stronger. Get better. We've all got those personal winters. The key is not to wish for a better winter. The key is to wish for more strength, more wisdom, more courage, get better, get wiser, get stronger. Here's number two. Learn to take advantage of the spring. Spring means opportunity. Here's what you must learn to do. Underline the two words if you're taking notes. Take advantage. Take advantage of the spring. Don't just be faked out by the spring because the nice weather has come. And looks like everything is going to be a lot better. The winter's finally passed. The spring is here. I'm telling you, that's not going to do it for you. Just because the spring is here, it's not going to do it for you. You've got to seize it with your own two hands and take advantage. Read the books. Go back through your notes. Get ready to cash in on the spring. And now there's a sense of urgency here. Here's why. Spring doesn't last that long. What if you asked a farmer to go bowling in the spring? What would he probably say? He would say, you're insane. You can go bowling in the winter when you can't plant the crop. You can't go bowling in the spring. You've only got a certain piece of time and you've got to get it done in that certain window of opportunity. And that's what we've got here, a window of opportunity. Let's take advantage of it. It's called take advantage of the spring. And there's also an urgency here. How many springs have you got in a lifetime? Not very many. Don't waste your springs. Don't just let them pass, 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 hoping the time will pass. Take advantage. Number three, first, learn how to handle the winter. Second, take advantage of the spring. Number three, in the summer, learn to nourish and protect. We've got some major challenges now come summertime. One is to nourish our values, take care of them, feed them. Don't let them go hungry. Don't let them go wanting in nourishment and care. And then here's something else we've got to do in the summer. Defend ourselves against the enemies. As soon as you plant the garden, the busy bugs and the noxious weeds are out to take it. And you've got to learn not only to nourish your values, you've got to learn to do battle with your enemies. Whatever threatens you, I'm asking you to threaten it back. Take care of your responsibility, but don't take anything off of anybody. Somebody wants to destroy your chances for a good future by their negative talk, negative thinking, putting it all down, I'm telling you. Walk away if you have to, walk away. Indecision, you gotta make those decisions. The ones that don't turn out to be good gives you experience to make better decisions. Don't let much time go by without making some decisions. The ones that you can make quickly, make them quickly. The ones that take time, take your time. But get those decisions made. Don't let indecision be an enemy, rob you of the future, empty your bank account. Don't let that happen. The next one is doubt. 
I'm asking you to have some faith, have some courage, believe, drive your doubts into a small corner. Don't let them loose like a mad dog, drive you into a small corner. Don't doubt the future, don't doubt the possibilities, and here's the most important one of all, don't doubt yourself. If I've got miracle working power to change my life, so do you. If I've got the ability to change, so do you. If I've got the ability to read, so do you. If I can discover, so can you. If I can grow, you can grow. I'm asking you, don't sell yourself short. Here's the next one, worry. I'm asking you to drive worry into a small corner. You gotta worry some. All this negative stuff serves serve some purpose, but the key is for you to be the master, not the servant. If it's two o'clock in the morning and your daughter's not home yet, best you worry. But here's what I'm asking you to do. You be the master of worry. Drive it into a small corner. Don't let it loose. And I'm asking you to go home with some new faith and some new courage. I'm asking you, don't worry. Drive it into a small corner. We've all got concerns. And sometimes we all wonder. And sometimes there's a little crack of doubt. We worry a little, but I'm telling you, drive it into a small corner. Drive your worries into a small corner. A couple of more. Enemies of the mind you got to do battle with in the summer. One is pessimism that tries to get you only to see the negative side. Of course, there's the negative side. Life is part negative. What else is new? If the glass is half empty, it is half empty. You say, well, I've been only taught to see that it's half full. Well, sure, it's half full. But it's also half empty. I mean, can't you handle that? I mean, you know, that's not too difficult. But here's what pessimism would try to get you to do. Believe that it's only half empty. And when pessimism comes to your mind, you've got to educate pessimism because pessimism is stupid. Pessimism tries to get you to believe that it's only half empty. You got to say pessimism, you've never been to school. Too dumb and stupid to know. Of course it's half empty, but it's not only half empty. It's also half full. I'm asking you to be in charge. Be in charge of your own mind. Be in charge of your own destiny. Do battle with your enemy in the summertime. Now here's the last one, in the harvest time, number four. Take your harvest and all that comes your way with full responsibility. Don't complain. Complaining, I'm telling you, could ruin all of your chances. Complaining sometimes starts as an infection. If you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. Do battle with it in the harvest time. Reap your harvest without complaint. It's your crop, you sowed it. You either made the calls or didn't make the calls. You wrote the letters, you didn't write the letters. You did it or you didn't do it. You put together a good day or you didn't put together a good day. Take responsibility when the harvest time finally comes and say, hey, it's my crop, gotta take responsibility for it. I do not complain. And then here's the next one, do not apologize if you've done well.